Welcome to Dunedin, the spring home of the Toronto Blue Jays. It's the pristine golf waters of Honeymoon in Calabisi Island. And good food as well. Also known as Dog Eden. Ain't that right, Bella? I understand the price of freedom. I wish to join you. Oh boy! Life seems to always want to put us in a rush. It's why we need places to retreat to. Even from its early years, this Florida Suncoast City had attracted people with its village-like atmosphere and relaxed lifestyle. It was the first settlement in Pinellas County. In the late 1800s, a couple of Scotsmen would name this town Dunedin. With a waterfront dock that accommodated large vessels, it became a major trading center along the shipping lines that ran from Cedar Key to Key West. With both trains and steamships bringing tourists to the area and its year-round outdoor fun, it grew. But unlike many of the other Florida towns, Dunedin chose to retain its unspoiled beaches, its village-like Main Street atmosphere, refusing the trappings and congestion of many of those other Florida coastal cities. No high-rise condos here. In this video, we take you on the Dunedin Causeway as we travel out to Honeymoon Island and show you all the ways you can travel to the undisturbed Caladesi Island, traveling on a ferry across the Hurricane Pass. Then return to Honeymoon Island and show you South Beach and North Beach, as well as Pinellas County's only Dog Beach and the Osprey and Pelican Trails. Back on the mainland, we explore the nature areas of Hammock Park. We hop on the Pinellas Trail. If you like Florida and good beer, you'll love Dunedin, with seven breweries scattered along the Main Street area, all within easy walking distance, many right on the Pinellas Trail. We'll show you the many outdoor restaurants, eateries, coffee bakeries, and ice cream places. And these birds that migrate here from Toronto in the spring. And lastly, the Dunedin Marina, where we will show you fishing charters, sail cruises, and boat tours. So join us on the waters, the trails, the main street of a hidden gem on Florida's Sun Coast. And I think by the end of the video, you will be saying, I love Dunedin. That was well done. We start our journey not far where we left off in our last video, just seven miles south of Tarpon Springs, four miles south of Crystal Beach. The Dunedin Causeway crosses over St. Joseph Sound. There's a lot to do on the causeway, even before you arrive on Honeymoon Island. On the left is Jet Ski Beach. Motorized watercraft can only be launched here on the eastern third of the causeway. Clearwater Beach Wave Runners offers a 90-minute jet ski tour of Honeymoon Islands, $155 with two people. It departs from Clearwater Beach Marina. You can rent kayaks with Sail Honeymoon at the High and Dry Grill. Kayaks are $35 for a single, $45 for a double for two hours, four hours are $45 single, and $60 double. It's about a 20-minute trip to the northern part of Caladesi Island, but much longer to explore the mangrove areas. So you might want to do a four hour rental to have time to spend on the island. Stand up paddle boards are $30 for an hour or $45 for two hours. The high and dry grill and tiki bar here has a pretty good menu with fried catfish, sausages, or a variety of tacos. This is a good area to view dolphins. Saw many of them as I walked along the causeway. Honeymoon Island does not allow camping. However, you can camp on the causeway. It's $10 for a single use two day permit. It's $8 per vehicle or $4 for a single occupant to enter Honeymoon Island. Honeymoon and Caladesi Island are separated by Hurricane Pass, named so for the 1921 hurricane that created this inlet through what was then known as Hog Island. There is a nature center with an observation deck that looks out over St. Joseph's Sound. The Caladesi Ferry is located close to the entrance to the park. We'll show you the ferry in a bit, but gonna have breakfast first. 
The far south end of the island is Pet Beach. It is about three tenths of a mile from the parking area, so a little bit of a walk, but it's worth it. There's a little lagoon here. Dogs seem to love it. A pet wash near the parking area. In the South Beach parking area, there's two cafes. I'm going to the one at the South Beach Pavilion, where John and Kaylee are making me a breakfast sandwich. Very friendly, good service. The South Beach Pavilion has a deck that is fully covered and more elevated than the Honeymoon Cafe that is on the north side of the parking lot. But Honeymoon Cafe probably has the better view of the beach and more scenic shrubbery. Both areas have outdoor showers. A good way to start your day is a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich at the South Beach Pavilion. With four miles of shoreline, you can easily find secluded areas. You can rent an umbrella and two chairs, $21 for three hours or $30 per day. This is a good area for shelling and fishing with sea trout, mackerel, and snook. Now it's time to head to Caladesi Island. The ferry is $18 for adults and $9 for children, 6 to 12. It departs every half hour from mid-February through Labor Day and weekends and hourly at all other times. Only service dogs are allowed on the ferry in Caladesi Island. We pass the other ferry returning from the island. There's a large sandbar on the northeast part of Caladesi Island, so the ferry takes a path close to the causeway then cuts south to the island. You start to see more wildlife as you enter the island. It's a 20 minute ride to the Caladesi Marina. Caladesi Island is connected with Clearwater Beach, so you could walk from there, but it's about a three mile walk from Pier 60 to Caladesi Island, or four miles to the marina area of the island. There's a 3.5 mile loop trail on the island. To get to the beach from the marina, you go toward the observation tower. There's a picnic area with two restrooms at both ends. Behind both restroom buildings are the boardwalks that lead out to the beach. You can rent two chairs and an umbrella, $35 for the day. You can bring beach chairs, umbrellas, and coolers on the ferry, but you have to be able to carry them. No beach carts, wagons, or children's strollers are allowed on the ferry. You're allowed a maximum stay of up to four hours on the island. You can rent kayaks at the cafe on the island as well as picking up drinks and snacks. Now back on Honeymoon Island, we head toward the North Beach. There is Oasis Beach too that is between the North Beach and the South Beach of Honeymoon Island. There's no cafe here, but there is a food tent in the middle of the parking lot. Also full restroom facilities with showers. The North Beach has some shallow jetties that people like to walk out to. The waters are shallow. You can walk quite a ways into the Gulf. Makes it good for those with little kids. There's the Paradise Boat Tour, which we will take at the end of this video. It leaves from the Dunedin Marina. The north side of the island is where the bigger picnic areas and playgrounds are at. There are two trails on Honeymoon Island, the Osprey and Pelican Trails. There are nesting colonies for Osprey and Pelicans. The Osprey Trail winds through the Pine Forest, and the Pelican Trail goes around the edge of the peninsula. Together, they form a two and a half mile loop trail. Time to head back to the mainland. We go back over the Dunedin Causeway. A little more crowded now than it was this morning. We turn right on alternate US-19. On the left is the Pinellas Trail, which we'll jump on further down the road at Weaver Park. But first, want to check out Hammock Park. At the main entrance is Andrews Memorial Chapel, built in 1888. There's a butterfly garden behind the chapel, picnic areas, and restroom by the main entrance. This is one of the best parks in Florida for trails, all very well maintained with lots of shade. They are pet friendly. Lots of little bridges, boardwalks, observation decks. Think about where we have been. 
The joy we shared with friends who care and all the things we've seen. A look back at the Dunedin Causeway and honeymoon in Caladesi Island as we continue south along St. Joseph Sound to downtown Dunedin. There are some good restaurants along Alternate 19, like Eddie's Bar and Grill, just north of Weaver Park. There's also an Eddie's at TD Ballpark that we'll see later. We arrive at Josiah Cephas Weaver Park. On the right side is a super long pier. Extends 725 feet into the bay. Across the street is a playground and picnic areas with beautiful sprawling oak trees. Also, this is a good place to park to ride the Pinellas Trail. There's also fitness equipment here. The elliptical, kinda wimpy, but some of the other equipment pretty decent able to get a good workout. Okay, now gonna jump on the Pinellas Trail. This trail runs for 45 miles from Tarpon Springs to St. Petersburg, but I think the best part is through Dunedin. You can rent a bike at Cafe Racer, which is a combo bike store and coffee shop with pastries, beer, wine, and gelato. There are multiple breweries and eateries right on the trail. They call this the Barrel District. There's CUNY Brewing Company, provides handcrafted beers with a focus on English ales and Belgium brews. Next to CUNY is the Lucky Lobster, a seafood and raw bar eatery with seating in an open air patio overlooking the trail. Moving further down is Cotherman Distilling with tropical rums from Florida molasses. Where's me rum? Next to that is Hop Brewing, a huge open air patio, a family friendly brewery with live music. A counter-served area makes ordering food and drinks convenient and quick. If you're looking to move to Dunedin, there's artisan apartment homes on the other side of the trail. And across the street from Hob Brewing, the Rusty Line, a gastropub with a rooftop bar, also good for Saturday and Sunday brunch from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and specials each day of the week. Across from the Rusty Line on Alternate 19 is Hogs Island Fish Camp, named for the original name of Honeymoon Island. Now back on the trail, we approach Main Street with shops on the right, including a gelato cafe, a pet store. And at Main Street, there's Cafe El Fresco, a European bistro and sidewalk cafe with everything from international cuisines to burgers. This Main Street area just has a friendly, relaxed, good vibe with people of all ages in a small town atmosphere, everybody in an upbeat mood one of the best hangouts in Tampa Bay. We cross over Main Street. On the right is the History Museum, set in the old train station, where we showed you the pictures from at the beginning of the video. It's $7 for adults and $5 for children. Open Tuesday through Sunday till 4 p.m. On the side of the museum is Lane's Lemonade, set in a railroad car. They have much more than lemonade. There's ice creams, milkshakes, freezes, pretzels, here is also the clock tower that rings on the hour. After the bell rings, there's sound of a steam engine. Ran into subscribers of ours, Jeff and Georgia, longtime residents here. We love it. It's fantastic, yeah. A lot of stuff to do around here. You're never bored. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic. Want some ice cream? A block north on Broadway is a good area for coffee. There's cork and beans, a coffee house in the morning, and a wine lounge in the afternoon and evening. I'm going across the street to the Dunedin Coffee Company. They have plenty of baked items, some gluten-free items too. I'm having a spinach and feta quiche. Another thing that I like about this area is you have these small spots to pick up quality food, like Pho Eden for Vietnamese food, right on the trail. Good, healthy, quality food. 
seaweed salad. Mmm, yum. It actually is pretty good. It tastes better than what you would think. There's also Taco Baby on Main Street near Broadway. Okay, we have a Blue Jays game to catch. Now what many people do is just walk to TD Stadium from Main Street on the Pinellas Trail. It's slightly over a half of a mile. I'm riding to the stadium on the Pinellas Trail. You can see the stadium there on the left. Now there's a free lot near the Soggy Bottom Brewery. It's a mile away, but there's a trolley that provides free transportation to the stadium. TD Ballpark is a beautiful stadium, not far from the Sound. We are here for spring training for the Toronto Blue Jays, which happens in March. But the Dunedin Blue Jays play here from April through September, and the tickets are much cheaper. In order to honor all the snowbirds who come down here from Canada and support our local economy, I'm polling for the home team. Ran into Liam, visiting with his family from Nova Scotia. Well, what do you think of this ballpark? It's amazing. It's big and sunny. It's nice. Yeah, I like it. Along the third base line is Eddie's Bar and Grill, we mentioned earlier. In the right field bleachers, there's a large bar. I'm picking up a veggie wrap at the third base bites. We saw this new pitch clock in our Pensacola video last year, now being implemented in the major leagues. I think it's a great idea, really speeds up the game. The Dunedin Blue Jays do have dog days every Monday, where human tickets are $7, dog tickets $3, and you can enjoy $1 hot dogs. Across from the stadium is Marguerite's Cafe with an outdoor patio under oak trees. We head back to Main Street on Douglas Avenue. On the left, Bowser's, a chill neighborhood tavern. All right, gonna give you a driving tour of Main Street before we head to the marina for a cruise. There's Flanagan's Irish Pub, and next to that, Dunedin Smokehouse, a barbecue with patio seating. On the corner is the living room on Main, a casual eatery with a dog-friendly patio and live music. Across the street, Pisces Sushi and Global Bistro. Now heading back west on Main Street, the Highland Games Festival happens in late March, early April, celebrates Dunedin's Scottish heritage with pipe bands, dancing, competitive games, and great food. You've left yourself exposed. The Dunedin Downtown Market happens here at Pioneer Park every Fridays and Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., November to May. During June through October, it takes place at the Railroad Museum on Saturdays only. On the left is Casatina, a Mexican restaurant. We pass by the museum again. The Jolly Trolley, which you can take to Clearwater Beach or Tarpon Springs, it's $5 for a day pass or $2.25 per ride. On the left, the Blur Nightclub. The Crown and Bowl, a funky American eatery martini bar with live music. Across the street, Cafe Al Fresco, we mentioned earlier. Some gift shops. And Tony's Pizza with New York style pizza by the slice. And Harley's Gourmet Popcorn and Cider Shop. And on the end, Strawn's Ice Cream. Strawn's is a Scottish name, highly regarded for its homemade ice cream. Also has a pretty good selection of fudge and other desserts. They gave me a little pup ice cream cone for Bella, which she loves. I'm having a milkshake, really delicious. Hey, hello. Hello. Watch you all the time. Hello, thank you. <laughs> Ran into some of our subscribers from California, Quinn, Teresa, Sam, and Jack, looking to move to Florida. All right, now let's start to head to the marina. Have a boat tour to catch. It's easy walking distance, just a couple of blocks. On the way, there's the CC Riders restaurant. Serves seafood and steaks in a 1903 cottage with porch seating, as well as outdoor seating around the restaurant. Edgewater Park is a waterfront park along the marina. Note, it has the closest public restrooms for any of your activities at the marina. Just a nice park with benches under sprawling oaks. A good place to enjoy your morning coffee. Or maybe try some Tai Chi. There's a playground. At the marina, there's the Old Bay Cafe, featuring seafood and draft beer. 
on a rustic deck overlooking the marina. There's Daisy May Fishing Charters with 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12 hour trips starting at 750. Or done gone private boat tours with food provided by Old Bay Cafe, $400 for a 2 to 3 hour cruise. A boat day offers private tours on a double decker pontoon with a slide. There's Windstar Sailing with a private 2 hour to full day trips to Honeymoon in Caladesi Island, Clearwater Beach, or Anclo Key that we saw in our Tarpon Springs video. A four-hour cruise is $350. There's Dunedin Sailing Charters with a sunset cruise starting at $275 or a four-hour cruise for $350. Includes up to six passengers with complimentary snacks and drinks including red and white wine. We are taking the Paradise Express but let me show you around the pier first. At the pier is Bon Appetit with an elegant dining room as well as an outdoor bar and patio right on the water. On the pier, every Friday and Saturday during sunset from mid-October to end of April, you can listen to a piper play Amazing Grace and other live bagpipe music. You can see the skyline of Clearwater Beach in the distance. For lodging, this Best Western is nice. Convenient parking where you can pull right up next to your room. They also have a Wheel of Fun Rentals for renting bikes. There's also the historic Fenway Hotel for something a little more upscale. It's an autograph collection hotel with boutique style rooms. There's the hi-fi rooftop bar. Time for the cruise on the Paradise Express. The two and a half hour sunset cruise is $38 for adults, $30 for children 4 through 12. Includes cocktails. I serve you your choice of cocktails. I'm having a sangria. Sangria? Yeah, sangria is great. Is it? Only service dogs are allowed. They sail out to San Key, Clearwater Beach, and or Honeymoon in Caladesi Island. On this day, the tide was low around Honeymoon Island, so they just did the Clearwater Beach area, which is fine, being we already showed you Honeymoon in Caladesi Island. A look at Bayshore Boulevard from the water, and a look at Bayshore Boulevard from the road. It's a beautiful drive as you head towards Clearwater Beach, with palm trees along the road. This cruise is fully narrated, showing you celebrity homes, sailing by Coachman Park with a brand new outdoor event venue called The Sound. We sail under the Clearwater Memorial Bridge. We'll probably be doing a new video of Clearwater Beach next winter. Our captain coordinates with the captains of the other boat tours to create an attractive weight for the dolphins to play in. And it worked, as we saw many, many dolphins. Clearwater Beach, one of those other Florida coastal cities that I was referring to earlier, where Dunedin chose a different route, avoiding the high rises and congestion. So if you like that small town, more relaxed atmosphere of Dunedin, and if you still want to visit Clearwater Beach, I'd suggest staying in Dunedin. And you can always take a ferry or trolley to Clearwater Beach. Then you don't have to deal with the traffic. You get the best of both worlds. The Clearwater Ferry goes between Dunedin, downtown Clearwater, and Clearwater Beach four times a day on Friday through Sunday. You just have to book online first. In the distance, the schooner Clearwater that we showed in our Clearwater Beach video. A two-hour sunset sale is $75 for adults, $50 for children 5 through 12. Yes, there are more well-known glamorous cities on Florida's Gulf Coast. But if you define a great getaway as getting away from the concrete jungle, the city congestion, the rush rush of life, a place where you can explore nature and enjoy the simple life with a good craft beer, then you just might prefer Dunedin and Honeymoon Island. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Dunedin. For more things to do in Tampa Bay, check out U Nation, which has a weekend guide of things to do in the area. I'll put a link below. They have some short videos of Dunedin and Tarpon Springs. Also, if traveling with a dog in Dog Eden, I'd recommend these Kurgle Dog Backpacks. They're very durable. I put a link below. 
We are Tampa Aerial Media. We film travel promos across the USA for stock footage, or if you would like to hire us to film your area, city, or resort, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. Next, we'll be doing the second video of our Highway A1A series, featuring Greater Fort Lauderdale, and planning a huge three video series of the Smoky Mountains next month. From Florida Sun Coast, I wish blessings to you, wherever you may be. It's a good day to begin. This is over.